Yay, we are live. Okay. Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just laughing because I've just been chatting to her. <laughs> so she's, she's waiting in the back room. <laughs> Hi, we go. So, welcome to Equine Voices, and this is an interview with Pat Cleveland from the Ballot Horse Project in Alabama, USA. So it's afternoon there and it's 7.30 here. Um, I hope you enjoy this interview. If you have any questions, please feel free to send a message. Now, if you're doing this through Facebook, you will have to click on the link that says that um, you're going to give StreamYard permission to post your profile um, photo. Otherwise, it'll just be a blank um black person but with with a message so i won't know who it's from but a very warm welcome i'm just going to shortly introduce pat she's a ball of energy <laughs> a ball of energy uh, we had a quick chat yesterday and um yeah <laughs> it should be an interesting interview anyway so i'm just going to bring her in okay here she goes so <laughs> welcome <you>. pat <laughs> Hello, how are you? <laughs> I am fine. So we I've just explained that we had a quick chat yesterday and I said that you was a ball of energy. So this is going to be an inter interesting interview. Um so before we talk about um your past and, and, and stories that you want to share with us, can you just um just explain a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do with horses, please? <laughs> um well, I'm like everybody else. I love animals, and I always wanted to understand um, how to build better relationships with them. Uh, my animal of choice, one that I think I was just inherently attracted to, has been horses. Uh, I was crazy about them when I was in school. Ever since I was a little kid on my mom's lap, a cow was a horse. So growing up in Canada, I had great opportunities Uh out in the bush to ride bush horses and then I met my first major riding instructor who was from France and a graduate from the military school at Seigneur. Uh, from there I learned uh, the science of hippology and went on to become a actual professional rider. I my choice of competition was three-day eventing. And so I have a background in dressage jumping uh, long distance riding and I discovered that even though I was a very well-educated horse person, my horses were falling apart. And it didn't matter what I did according to the system that was right. It was always wrong. And so being a little bit intuitive from birth, uh, I started listening to myself and listening to what my horses were trying to show me. And it just opened up a series of doors that educated me uh, in the gifts of the energetic equine and the intuitive horse trainer. And it's taken me through my life and produced um, a research or an investigation into how we can use natural resources, energy, and the role of the human energy system, our intuitive connection with the telepathic horse, to actually prepare them for riding to prevent injuries and have you know behavior problems using energy and genetics and so i'm recognized as an international uh intuitive veterinary intuitive and i have credentials i'm certified in 12 different holistic and energy based therapies uh, I have studied uh, unified field physics. Uh, gee whiz. I have um, a long history. I've been doing this for over 40 years. And now we can work with just about every problem that a horse or a dog has and do so by looking at its confirmation, how the energy of nature moves through the animal's body and the impact of birth trauma. So I founded the Balanced Horse Project in 2000, and I moved from Canada to the United States where I have a horse farm, and people send their horses to us for problem solving and taking young horses in to prepare them so they have symmetrically balanced bodies so they can go on and have great lives and not have conflict with people. So I have, don't have a real description other than I am an intuitive, energetic horse trainer. That's quite a big description already. 
<laughs> oh dear, because I'm just going to explain to the viewers that we we literally met yesterday. We had a conversation yesterday, didn't we? Um, and uh, it it was very very energetic and very. You made me laugh so much. Um, <laughs> And we only got, and I only messaged you a few days ago about doing an interview, and you got back to me pretty much straight away, which was amazing. Um, so, well, you know, staying connected to people and especially to find like minded people is really important because, uh, at least where in my experience in the professional horse world, um, the idea of the holistic system of mm, the Apathic horse and mm. the science of interactive energy that takes us to unified physics or the spirituality of the chakra system of the human and how does that inter or interfere uh, influence the aura field of the horizontal horse I mean these things should be discussed and I get very frustrated because I work in a world that is focused on empirical science where everything is isolated states, nothing interacts and therefore, you know, talking about energy and perhaps interaction of consciousness between different species is like, you know, <laughs> it's just yeah, a little too yeah. much. So, yeah. <laughs> so I value any opportunity to reach out and interact with other people who have intuitive interactions or interests with nature and other species of life. I think people are asking more questions. People, um, it's it's more the the intuitive side is becoming more aware and people are asking questions and the, and they're not just sticking to the to the mainstream what they used to um but obviously if it's if it's um the medical side they do tend to do that which is you know uh, i always say to my clients if if you're really worried you 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 speak to a vet because that's what you have to say anyway and if it's a medical thing um but if it's to do with uh, emotional or uh, anything like that then then I can go long, but I'm sure you have it. You have um, more depth, so you can talk more about that. Um, so when you when you say um, on an energetic level between, explain a little bit more about when you when you talk about the energy. So how in layman's terms, so somebody that doesn't know anything about that can, can understand. Um, <laughs> If you don't mind. Oh, okay, so like that's a really broad question. Like set me up in a situation and then I'll walk you through the dynamics from my perspective and understanding. Okay, okay right. Let me see. So, so. Um, <laughs> I think like putting you on the spot. <laughs> I'm the spot. Okay, so you, um, I tell you what, so lam laminitis at, in, in the UK because um, a lot of horses that graze in the UK, we have cattle grazing. So Mm -hmm. the, the grazing that they have is quite rich and um so that we have a lot of problems especially sort of spring where where horses are getting laminitis laminitic um yes. so it, it's a real problem and sometimes the, the they have to be in so can you sort of can you look into that side can you explain with how that would work well, there's, there's different reasons for okay Take this as subjective because mm -hmm. I do have a veterinarian degree. And right. these are the things that I have experienced as a horse trainer on a personal level. And also an intuitive energetic level. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the earth produces food and the food has minerals in it and those minerals are conductive and they go into the animal's body our bodies and they are the elements that transport the the electrical system so if you just stay from the brain part of the brain and out to the body um so that's an electrical system it's a circuit and we forget that the bones are made out of calcium and calcium is actually a metal. So calcium is also really conductive. And the fluids that really help to transport this energy or this conscious signal of life through the body are the hormones. And we have horses that are being, and I'm sorry if I sound like an anti-vaxxer, but just bear with me. Here. There's a reason. <laughs> okay. Um, 
the pituitary gland is what drives the hormone system. And when we start to do a lot of vaccinations in animals, that that pituitary gland can actually get uh, contaminated. And then there's a, 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 a link in the brain between the pituitary and the pineal gland. And the pineal gland takes in the information from the environment. So if the pineal gland and the pituitary gland are basically uh, interrupted from uh, synthetic binders or just micro nanoparticles of medical medical yeah. metals like mercury, um, it starts to calcify and shut down those signaling systems. Mm -hmm. And so now we have, we get this condition called Cushing's. So in my experience is if I start to detoxify the, the function of the brain um, and open up the flow of hormones and increase the conductivity of the horse's body, then the system starts to want to kickstart and cause this restoration of all the problems of the horse's body. It doesn't have to just be like a founder. The other problem that may cause a founder in horses, and this one I find very, very common, and it's a naturally produced situation. And again, it goes back to the uh, electrical system of the horse or even the person if you have gout. Okay, number one is your conductive value, the ability for energy to move through the body. Is it at a, a, a good state? Because basically the battery is, sorry, the battery, body is the battery. <laughs> We're solar panels. Okay. Oops, we've lost you. Oops. Can you still, oh, Pat, we've just lost you the connection. So you've just frozen. Let's hope we can get you back. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you just froze. I don't know can if you, you could. If you could, I can. You just froze, and then we we lost the signal a little bit. So you was okay. talking about. So where did you lose um, me? So you was talking about uh, how how good the conductive through your body the. Um, okay, so so that conductive value of the body is like keeping a battery charged, and yeah. the energy has to move from the higher points to the lower points of the horse's legs through the calcium, which is a metal, which conducts energy and it goes down. But if you go and look at the chest of a foundered horse, is it symmetrical? And if it's not symmetrical, that means that the distance that the electrical signal has to move down each leg is different. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're going to get some horses that will build up a lot of acid in a foot because the electrical current that has to discharge into the ground is slow. It's moving too slow. There's a block, there's resistance, or it's moving at a different speed or frequency <laughs> than the energy going down all the other legs of the horse. And so this slows the energy down on one leg or maybe two. Maybe the knees are twisted. Maybe the elbows are out of place. Uh, could be the withers. You know, just look. Just take a picture. Take your cell phone. Take a picture of your horse's chest when it's standing still. And then put it in, I don't know, say Word document and take and draw lines. And is the horse... Correct. Symmetrical. He's symmetrical in his yeah. chest. So these shutoff points can cause an acid buildup. And when acid builds up, what does acid do if you put it on, on a, a tissue paper? It eats the tissue paper. Mm -hmm. So that's really what the acid buildup in the horse's foot is doing. It's starting to try to find a way to either be neutralized by alkalinity or find an escape route because the body's trying to push it out because it, it needs to survive. And so we get all this buildup in the foot because it's not grounding, it's too acidic and it can all be reversed. Now I work in energy frequency, so I have worked on 
a lot of horses and founder. And the first thing I do is make sure that I have them as structurally aligned as possible. I re-alkaline their systems. And then I will drive um, the circulation through the foot using either a magnet or I, I'm backed up with uh, red light therapy. Okay. And I just reverse the process. But you don't get founder in horses who are biomechanically symmetrical. Okay. That's that's really fascinating. <laughs> so, uh, well, listen, I worked with um, a homeopathic vet. Uh, he just passed two years ago, and he was my mentor for years and years and years. And we would have these philosophical debates because he was very much into physics and homeopathy, and I was very much into natural. I, I, I'm like, <laughs> I understand how energy moves uh, without you know artificial interventions and and we would have these debates and he would talk about well if I give this homeopathic remedy and we trim the horse this way and I'm like yes this is all good and then all of a sudden the horse's foot will fracture open on the wall or the coffin bone will come through on the bottom and he's like oh we need to put the horse down and I said no you don't I said if you're not using a pharmaceutical, you won't attract a lot of infection. You just put it in a boot with some Epsom salts and I'll put red light energy on it. And guess what? That foot cracked at the quarter on one horse, cracked at the corner and peeled all the wall off. And normally this is where you put a horse down because, you know, dirt and everything. So we just kept a boot with Epsom salts and water and... I put lights on it and I just made sure that the horse was kept structurally correct. And guess what? We had no infection because we didn't change the pharmaceutical. We didn't add a pharmaceutical or disinfect it. And there's a reason why we didn't get infection is because the pharmaceutical or the synthetic um, materials that we sometimes use, they don't support the electrical conductivity that's needed to bring the tissue of both sides of the wound together. They shut down, they shut down the conversation of energy in the body. So we, we didn't use any uh, disinfectants or anything. And I just drove energy through the horse's foot. The hoof cracked open because this horse re-rotated the internal structures of the foot. Uh, I think he shifted seven and a half degrees at the coffin bone to come to a normal balance. Goodness. And that's just one, that's just one horse. I have another horse that came in with high low syndrome and he was not foundered. We stripped the shoes off of him. <laughs> I detoxed him for three weeks and then I went in and I did my craft and my craft is basically rebirthing the horse's body so it can restore its natural alignment and its natural symmetry. When I did that, oh my gosh, I'm glad I took pictures. The <laughs> horse's foot in 48 hours shifted 20 degrees. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it took six weeks for him to come back sound. He completely grew matching, two matched feet instead of high-low syndrome. His shoulders altered, his whole body shifted just from one training session at the Balanced Horse Project. So this is where I've studied all kinds of therapies. I mean, wow, you know, I had to learn all the things. Um, as a horse trainer, I was really trying to just say, look, I, I can't afford to have my vet come out every every time I come home from a horse show. You know, when you have like 10 to 13 horses on the show circuit, that's a lot of money going out the front door. And sometimes you don't come home with a paycheck. So, <laughs> you know, you have, to, you have to be kind of thrifty. And that's where I started self-educating and going out and learning things. And I started my learning process in 19, oh God, this is going to date me, <laughs> 1975, 1974, 75, okay? And um, it just, 
it just kept growing. But I was always looking for this permanent, what is the permanent solution? You know, like, I want my horse to stay fixed, please. I can't keep looking at them and being empathic, you know, kind of go, oh, gosh, I, I can't handle this. So <laughs> that's where I stopped because I found that the holistic therapies were just like the allopathic interventions. They, they support a positive change. Mm -hmm. But then when you put the animal back into stress, it collapses. And that told me that we weren't, we weren't addressing the source of the problem. So you wasn't go. You wanted to go to the cause, not the symptom of. The I'm not one. I can't as a horse trainer, or just a person mm. that looks at humane care and treatment of animals. I can't. I can't get on a horse, and and know that all I'm doing is masking their their dysfunction, and going out and and asking them to work, and then come home and 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 watch them kind of go into decline. I can't ethically do that so yeah. as that type of person <laughs> okay now I like riding <laughs> don't get me wrong okay um but I wanted a permanent answer where's the permanent answer yeah and then no, I discovered I'm not the only person that's looking for it you know, there's there's a bunch of us out here so I that's totally why I, that. I stopped I, I stopped all my therapy and my clients were going, well, why aren't you doing, you know, all these therapies anymore? And I said, because I, I want to get down to the solution. So we don't have to do it. Yeah. Can we just go and make the horse right and never have a problem? And that's what the Balanced Horse Project, uh, the inv investigation that we've been doing. Uh, geez, we actually started in 1990, uh, became a formal investigation in 2000. And uh, we figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> so you just make me, you just make me smile. I just want to, I just, I just smile when you're talking. Um, so Pat, can you, can you, um, <laughs> can you explain what, um, so the rebirthing is, what, what, what exactly is that? So if you can explain. Um, okay. Um, okay. Okay everybody's crooked okay <laughs> <laughs> why <laughs> myself included <laughs> why why are we crooked why do we have back pain you know when you get older you start talking to people and go oh yeah i had my my left knee replaced and my right hip replaced and then i had to have neck and back surgery and you know or or you have one foot that's bigger than the other if you go to buy shoes or sometimes you have calluses on the heel on one sh on one foot and and a callus maybe on the ball of your foot you know like your opposite why why you know <laughs> we're supposed to be like the, the, the supreme beings on this planet and and we're dysfunctional <laughs> um and so i had a horse come in from oklahoma and her name was liberty and we called her case the fractured foal she was actually a breech birth baby and uh the the vets out in oklahoma which is 900 miles away from where i live um said there was no hope for this horse and the owners read an article that I had published in the Holistic Horse magazine, I think in 2006. So six years later in 2012, they have found my article about um, birth trauma in foals and what would happen if we could control the development of confirmation in, in horses from the very beginning of life. Well, the next thing you know, and this is where the intuitive empathic part comes in. These people are 900 miles away. They send me pictures of this very twisted little baby, which you can find on the Balanced Horse Project. You just scroll back to like 2010, 12, I think it's 2012 she's on. It's Liberty the Fractured Fool. She was so crooked that it took her five hours to pull her tongue into her mouth um they had to lift her up to nurse off the mare um and that was in the first 24 hours and i mean i said i don't know how to fix this and i just got this um intuitive direction that i was supposed to move forward and see if we could help 
So I took the pictures and I asked for direction and my guides or my higher self <laughs> or maybe the horse itself said, this is what you need to look for. And I went and I looked at all the trauma points I could find on the pictures and I came up with an exercise where we just took a sheet and wrapped it around the foal and they took and passively pulled on the sheet and let go. And before we know it, the foal's standing up, her legs are pulling in, her body is less um, compressed and twisted. And within 24 hours of that moment of intervention, she was able to go and nurse off her mom and she grew up and I worked with her for a year and a half to see if we could learn more about the presence of trauma in newborn horses. And really, how does that affect how they, they grow up? And can we modify our training programs so that we're not trying to make crooked horses do things <laughs> that they can't do because they're not straight? And we think they're straight and our riding doesn't do it. So. That was my first encounter. The intuitive part came in, um, and it was kind of really important for me to have this experience because, you know, people go, oh, that's all, mm, yeah. And, <laughs> but here we are 900 miles apart, and Julie, the lady who owned the horse, she's saying, okay, well, I'm touching the horse here, and I could literally feel – I could feel the trauma in my own body when I just meditated on it. And then she started touching the horse and I could actually tell on my own body where she was touching. And I could say, okay, well, this is where you need to put your hand. And now I want you to push harder. And she, and she was like, like this thinking I'm seeing through a video. And I'm like, yeah. no, I, I said harder. She says, well, how hard? I said, well, keep pushing and I'll tell you, tell you when it's enough. And, and then I would get the feeling and I would tell her, okay, that's good enough. She says, are you feeling me touch the horse? I went, yes. And she goes, how does that work? <laughs> so, you know, if, if I hadn't have been open to exploring myself. It wouldn't have happened. Wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So there is a point and a purpose every time somebody faces a challenge and horses, I think are here to help open us up and mm -hmm. give us permission to expand our awarenesses because I really do think that humans are extremely amazing individuals. You know, like you can talk about, you know, our, our athletics or our intellectual capacity. But I think we go far beyond that. I, yeah. I really do. So that's why I pursued what I was doing from an energetic, empathic um, perspective and basically let go of the holistic approach to applying therapies. Because if I can go and unwind the trauma in a horse's body when they're like at a year old to two years old, that ho horse goes through life and he is interested in learning and being a partner and he doesn't have the serious injuries that other horses get. And when he does, his energy system is so correct that they go and heal twice as fast than a normal horse. So it's just amazing when you turn your horses on by reversing the, the spin or the twist of birth trauma. That's amazing. So do you find when you're, um, oh, well, firstly, so when, you, when you've done this with the, with the horses that you're treated, do you find that you, you, you don't have to see, do you, do you keep in touch with them or you find that you don't actually have to see them or do you get to I know don't what have happens? to see most horses. Now, I started, okay, so you take um, a hypothesis, an idea, okay, and you go, how do I take the hypothesis, create a theory, and from the theory produce enough facts to say that the theory is a philosophy and apply the philosophy? <laughs> All the words. You've nearly lost me there. 
<laughs> okay, sorry. So how do you how do you take an idea and prove it to the rest of the world that it's right? So I took and when I moved from Canada to United States, I moved to Alabama because the land taxes here are cost effective. I can afford to own land in Alabama. Okay. So I got, I got on a farm and I had been working as an integrated sports, equine integrated sports therapist. And a lot of my clients were high end riders and they had all these cast off horses and they didn't want to send them out to the meat man. So they gave them to Pat because Pat's a therapist. Pat can look after the horse, Pat, Pat, Pat. And I thought, well, everything for a reason. So I just started taking in all these cast off horses. I've had Olympic horses in here. I have a $65,000 reigning horse. I have a $100,000 retired dressage horse. I have race horses, cutting horses. I have ponies. People gave me all these cast offs. All these horses. I had three horses come in out of state under euthanization orders because they had been aggressive with humans and were considered public safety hazards. Okay. And I will tell you that they were all lame and all had dead end prognosis. And they became my crash test dummies. And they showed me intuitively how to address their primary problem. And the primary problem is they're out of balance. They know it. They can show us what they need us to do. Every horse is a little different. But I just started fixing wrecks. And people still think I'm a therapist and, and not a horse trainer. But I had to fix the broken horse. Mm. To prove that the first injury of the body shuts down the energy system so that the genetic information in every cell is not nurtured or not released so that it can activate um, rapid restoration of damaged tissue. So now I work with horses that walk sideways in circles, mm. horses that have Oh, neurological imbalances, limitations, like shivers and string halt and all the things we're told we can't fix. My horse and I don't fix them. <laughs> My horse fixes them. Ah. I, just, I just apply a series of very specific exercises that I developed after working on my first 21 wrecks. Um, all 21 horses, by the way, uh, return to soundness. I had one horse that had high ring bone on the pasture and who did not completely restore because he had pre-existing calcium deposits. However, he was sound enough to go out and gallop around in the herd. So it's a delight every morning to get up and have my coffee and look out the window and watch 21 horses who are supposed to be dead <laughs> out there running around bucking and jumping and totally <laughs> fine. You know, it just it kind of makes you go, okay, there's a lot of people that really need to know about this. So I'm interested in what's the source, not the symptom. So if yes. you have a horse, a horse with a, a stifle problem, that's not the problem. That's the symptom, okay? Where's, yes. Where is the source that physically overstressed the stifle? Let's go there. That's what I want to do. And mm. then can I turn on? the switches in the horse's body so that it can use its own information and resources to self-correct. And then I just stand back, turn them out, watch them. And I mean, some of these horses will switch on and self-restore in 24 to 48 hours. The body differences are amazing. We used to do, we used to um, take I had a standardized floor. I made lines on the floor and standardized a wall. So I had gradations on the wall and we would put paper on the wall and do back tracings with a horse standing as square as possible. And then we go and do these exercises and nobody would believe me. Okay. Seriously. Nobody believed me. And I have owners come and watch and they go, that doesn't happen. <laughs> like, Okay, <laughs> I'm taking pictures and they're looking at the pictures. That doesn't happen. I'm like, 
okay, so <laughs> how much proof do you need? I've had horses that when we rebirth them in these exercises, these training and balance exercises, <laughs> they get taller. The tall, the most height that we've gained is two inches, two and a quarter inches. Um, that horse gained height in three days. That's unheard of. I mean, <laughs> so don't send me borderline ponies that you want to stay pony because I have them over over your 14 two hand. Okay. I've had horses unwind lengthwise and they've gained eight inches in length in 30 minutes. Oh my goodness. And I was so excited. I used to tell people about all these things. And my friends just said, would you quit lying? And I'm like, I'm not lying. Go look at the horse. Yeah. You know, and, and then they would tell their friends and their friends would come back on them and say, you can't say that. That's impossible. Science says that doesn't happen. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Oh, if you hear noises, I have horses at the at the back gate. Oh, I, I, I saw earlier one went, one went past. Um, I'm just going to stop you okay. seconds. Um, um, so I'm just going to. Right. Okay. So, I can't read it. <laughs> she can't share what. So somebody's trying to share, and for some reason she can't share. I don't know why. So I'm going to try and share. Okay. Um, so this is some of the comments. This is um, Martha. <laughs> She's just commented on on what you just said about standing taller. <laughs> um, okay. So if you carry on talking, and I'll just try and share. Okay. So um, to kind of back up my hmm, direction of mm -hmm. uh, thinking that our first injury is birth trauma. And if we went back and looked at that and addressed it, we would get a different horse to ride or a different dog to play with, you know? And uh, when Liberty was staying with me, uh, they did bring her over when she was, I think a two year old and she stayed with me for a couple of weeks. So they drove a crooked horse from Oklahoma to Alabama <laughs> and they left her here with me to do some pictures and, you know, get good, good information. I'm trying to validate it by collecting serious data, you know, <laughs> because yeah. I'm making, I'm making extraordinary claims. Um, so anyway, I have my husband, I put, this is radical. I put tape down our paved driveway and made it straight. And then I asked my husband to walk the crooked horse down the tape. And I tried to videotape the placement of the feet so you could see if she was walking sideways or, you know, if there was any compensation in the motion. And then I kind of picked the camera up and here's, <laughs> This sounds terrible, <laughs> but here's the horse walking down the driveway and my husband walking down the driveway. And beside <laughs> my husband is a dog walking down the driveway. And I'm going, well, look at that. They all have the same biomechanical twist. <laughs> twist. <laughs> Just stand still. I took a picture of all three of them and I went, okay. I looked at them in the computer and I went, oh. How do you get three different three. species and they all have the same pattern? What is the common denominator? It's a birth twist, birth injury. Uh -huh. And shortly after that, a, a paper came out. Well, actually, it was before that. The paper actually was published in 19, 1997, I think, mm -hmm. Um and I'm not sure if it was in Practical Horseman or Equus. But anyway, it was a paper written on birth trauma. And the um, author of the paper, I believe, was Dr. Hessop out of Australia. And he wrote a lovely article on birth trauma. And then I backed up the study, um, the original study that was written by Daniel Jean, J-E-A-N, Jean, John, 
Okay. And she is, she was at the University Montréal in Quebec, France. Or Quebec, Ontario, sorry. Quebec. <laughs> Montreal. <laughs> and Quebec. You can tell I'm Canadian. Can't even get my provinces right. Anyway, so she um, had a grant. And this is how, how hidden this kind of uh, investigation is. She had a grant to compare radiology to the brand new idea of using ultrasound for investigating and getting images in the human body. And the study um, used neonatal foals. Some of these foals had passed away. So they're using the bodies of, of newborn foals and they put them through the radiograph and they put them through the ultrasound and they determined that the ultrasound produced a better image. That's what her grant was for. But she wrote a secondary paper and she noted that over 65% of the foals that they put through had birth trauma in the front quarters and the birth trauma in a lot of these um, bodies were, was extreme. Some of these, um, well, they all showed, sorry, multiple fractures of the ribs, uh, dislocation at the joints of the legs and the shoulders, the spinal deviations. And in some cases, it was the cause of death. And then she goes on to say that most of the fillies had a greater amount of injury on the left-hand side than the right-hand side. Now, when somebody, I, and she couldn't justify why there was a difference, and I don't know, maybe it was just the way it, it happened. She went on to say that the fractures of the ribs were not at the top, at the spine, at the... Um, but sorry, not at the top of the spine. They were down about an inch to an inch and a half above the contacostal joint, which is the the seat where the base of the rib anchors into the little bridge that comes off the breastbone. Mm -hmm. So there's a pre-existing injury in every animal that's born, every animal that comes through a birth canal. And that report was sent out to all the major veterinary universities in the industrialized world. Mm -hmm. And it should come out. It should come out. Yeah. To the people who are putting their lives and their family, their children at risk on riding horses that are defending themselves against a pre existing injury. It's causing the development of their body to be lopsided. And so when we try to ride them and channel them through our legs or, you know, bring them into a posture of self-carriage and, and elevation if you ride dressage, but he's got high-low syndrome in his feet or he's one-sided when you bend him or he can't hold his canters, you know. That if you knew your horse was crooked at birth, and you could do something about it so that they never, ever had to have mechanical training or artificial interventions to mask the condition. Would you do something about it? Yes, absolutely. So this is the depth of awareness. And I waited and asked a couple of um, very knowledgeable veterinarians if they would bring it forward and I never heard back so I decided to take this on and instead of making it a therapeutic or a medical approach I would take it on as a grassroots <laughs> application for people who own and work animals to prevent situations yeah. And it's taken me down some pretty interesting rabbit holes. And it's a very important conversation that I don't want it to go into therapy or into medicine because then it will go back under license. And if it goes under license, you and I won't have an opportunity to be preventative and look after our animals. Now, I'm not saying that veterinarians don't have a role in animal care. I really do think they are an important part of it. 
but there are there's the right time and the right place and as i can see we need some help and when i did the statistics on birth trauma and you know the horses send me these these feelings or you know i just stand there and ask the horse and he'll touch his body and show me where, where he needs help okay and then i try to talk about these things and the mainstream horse world is going oh she's just kind of an intuitive creative <laughs> and, and yet they keep sending me their horses and i'm like okay <laughs> i'm an intuitive creative and there's real science behind what i am offering mm, yes. so now i've taken the abstract of a, an intuitive an intuitive clue a path in life to to investigate and it's taken that abstraction and actually energetically unfolded it into physical reality and now we have the science to back up the statements to back up, yeah wow well, you know how, how special is that that's amazing that's me it's amazing but to get and to get heard and to get to do what you do now and and get results and and to have feedback from um from people that wouldn't necessarily unless they've seen it with their own eyes sort of thing um <laughs> believing that's believing it um mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. That's amazing. I've got my head is just is <laughs> digesting. I can I can take you down any rabbit hole. You just point me, and I I can go there. You know, <laughs> it's so, it's a, it's a new science of horsemanship. So when you work with when you work with the horses, do you work with um? So do you do this a similar thing for for your clients? Because obviously they if if they're they're twisted <laughs> so if if you sort the when you've sorted the horse out and the horse is okay and then you've got somebody that, that rides the horse again and they're and they're twisted does that um would that does it, count? it doesn't well if your horse is is if the base of the horse is balanced symmetrical yeah. doesn't matter how twisted the rider is it will cut actually, it will Actually, if you go back in history, and they actually still do, humans who rode horses were healthier than humans that didn't ride horses. Because the lateral correct movement, okay, if both sides of the horse is equal from the head, the spine, down to the feet, if everything is in place and you sit on it, it's going to actually move you so that your body will actually relax and start to release itself. <laughs> so that's where that's where the the therapy of hippo of hippotherapy comes from, because they don't want they don't want like an old horse that drags himself around. You know, they they are looking for horses that engage in the hindquarters and drive forward into the withers. Their client is then getting the correct motion from the horse, and that exercises the rider's muscles correctly. And if they have structural deviations, it helps to relax the tension, the spasms, so that the body can self-correct. So that's a physical, that's a physical energetic interaction of direct contact. But what happens if there's no direct contact? Do you mean you want to go down that rabbit hole? <laughs> go on, then, Pat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is subjective, okay? <laughs> but in personal experience and while doing workshops and clinics and demonstrations, we have had situations where I am reversing the spin of birth in a horse. And they're usually pretty good sized horses. They're about 16, 16 three to 17 two hand horses. Mm -hmm. And the owner will be standing in front of the horse. And when I unwind the horse, there is a power surge. Okay. <laughs> and it runs through the body of the horse and the frequency change, the energy change comes out through the horse's chest 
and I have seen electrical shock, a bolt of energy come out of a horse's chest and hit the owner in the heart chakra and throw them back 15 feet and they're sitting in the dirt in the arena in tears with vertigo and cannot stand up for oh, 25 to 30 minutes. Wow. And that, that happened to a girl who was actually a PhD in, she was a pathologist. <laughs> okay. I she have, wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, I would, nobody was, okay. Um, and when you stand in the horse's energy field and the horse's energy is, is not in harmony, so you have say a piece of music it flows and it's harmonic and it's delicious and it invites your energy to participate and so you start dancing and having a good time okay when it's not that and you want to plug your ears okay shut down and you hold yourself because it's screeching fingernails on a chalkboard just really ooh, okay and when i take the potential of beautiful music the life force of a horse and I release the place where it's screechy and the surge of trapped energy comes through the whole energy system of the horse and it moves from the hind quarters to the front quarters and right out the front door at the chest and you're standing in that energy field think a horse's heart is huge mm, and favorite. produces an EMF field or a electromagnetic field. And it could be like offset, say offset over here. Well, when I bring it to the center and it goes, it, it envelops, it goes through your own energy field. It goes through your physical, your physical alignment. So a shock wave isn't it it's it's that mm -hmm. shock wave. and so if the wave of energy that's now coming through is coherent resonant in harmony beautiful music of the life force and it's moving through you do you think it would affect you <laughs> absolutely okay <laughs> So that's how long distance healing works. Yeah. Wow, you've explained, you've just explained, because um, you explained that really, um, yeah, you've explained that really well. <laughs> I'm just going to put, um, so where we get, here we go, there's a few comments. So this is a message from, so from Jane, this all makes sense, very interesting. We need more science to be published to help our work. As he It won't be published. No, this so this is this is Jane. She's a she's um I mentioned her yesterday when we was chatting. She's a healer. Okay. So she works on a cellular level and, and she her energy works through her, whatever the energy comes through. Yes. Um, but she, and she does work um she has worked with vets and sometimes she'll go see animals that are passing over. So she'll go she'll go with them and assist. And yes. and, and vets have um have asked for her but they they're not allowed to, not officially but they they do yes yeah, so this is why i love doing um kind of these types of conversations hmm. and i have a small group of people that are following me and we do uh intermittent courses <sighs> my frustration is this is that i have over 20 years of data and I can't get it published in the horse magazines because they are afraid that their sponsors will sue them, that the veterinary associations will sue them because the data and my statements are not empirically approved by a peer review board. So I can't get it in front of a peer review board because the work was not done by a PhD or an accredited lettered person. And I funded it all by myself. <laughs> That's an achievement in itself. So if it's not in the university system, 
but we have a paper, a, a document that was sent to all the teaching veterinary schools in the industrialized world. And if you ask your vet, they may actually be able to tell you about that study. But they're not teaching anybody else about it. No. And they're not using it. They're not using it. So kind of frustrates me because I think we're all here to do the best for our animals and for other each other. Mm-hmm. And I would like to see the information grow, but I can't get it published. I've I've I can write articles. I've written articles for two major horse magazines in North America and they cut out all the data. And they make it sound like it's um a kindergarten piece. Yeah. You know, and I've tried to I talked with my my mentor who is a homeopathic vet. He was actually more than a homeopathic vet. He he was very intuitive in his own own right and he used dowsing um to work with his clients over the phone. And he said the same thing. He says, I can't get my stuff published either. They spent uh, 15 years trying to pull his license for doing holistic and natural really? care. Yeah. Oh, yes. He had he had uh, five different lawyers for the different states that he actually did long distance work in uh, because they are not aligned a holistic practitioner is not aligned with the business model and and this maybe gets into politics but it it's i call it the lame horse the lame horse is a society because it's not about fixing the horse and i am about fixing the horse because i'm training the horse so the horse trainer science is not compatible with the veterinary science because the veterinary science is a completely different <laughs> outlook. It's not energetic and the horse is unconscious. <laughs> Let's see. And it's isolated effects. Whereas an, I'm training a horse, I'm working with the dynamics of balance, symmetry, and the energy that has to go through that horse's body to to accomplish this. So I'm working in a holistic system. I'm working in my vertical energy stream. How does it interact on a perpendicular level with a horse's horizontal energy stream so that I can have an interaction that is wordless, motionless? And it's from the breath and the intention. That's the way we used to ride. <clears throat> yeah. So how do I get that as a horse trainer? It's a holistic science. It's take all your physics, take your shamanic, your your older, older hmm, systems and go back to them. Because that's where you're going to find the truth of your animal is in those systems. I think if you have a car, good girl, (laughs) Piper. My dog is keeping the horses off the gate. The gate, the horses are going. I'd like to come in. Um, Out of your front of you, the horses in front of you. So, so you have two different perspectives. So if I'm in a car accident and I need somebody to stop a, a, an artery from bleeding and, and stitched up and please put some pins or something in my bones, yeah, I'm there. But I, I just think we could be using the horse and the genetics and the energy sciences of like epigenetics to validate what we as horse people have known for centuries. And right now we've allowed um, our knowledge to be taken and people have lost their confidence and lost connection with themselves Mm. and with nature. And that's where I think horses are awesome for helping people therapeutically because they open us up. They ground us. Very much in the moment and very 
um, very honest. They're very honest with you. They, they, yeah. Um, and you know, for some people, horses actually teach people how to love. Abs yeah, absolutely. You know? And and that's hard to explain to somebody that's never really seen a horse or is terrified. But if you bring them in, and we have people come in here, and you know they may have PST, PS, and the trauma from war. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, and and they're terrified. I have people come in, film crews come in, and they're terrified of the horse. And the next thing you know, the horse, my horses are so still emotionally because they aren't in pain. They're not afraid of their body. So so they interact with you very differently than a horse that's Same. still working with birth trauma. So yeah. these horses are mentally grounded and still, and they are in, on the same intellectual level as a human being, I swear. And then <laughs> Rain, would, my big Frisian cross mare, she'd come in behind us. One guy was terrified of horses, and she just stood behind him while he was filming. And he, he started, he reached out and he started patting the horse. He didn't realize that he was patting the horse. Because when he first came in, he was like, oh, will they bite? Will they kick? You know, will he run over? And next thing you know, he's patting the horse. And mm -hmm. so when he finished filming, I said, look at you. You're not afraid of horses at all. And he, he looked at Rain and he went, oh. <laughs> you know. Oh. That's, when that's amazing. We, we internally sense the insecurity of others and yeah. humans are natural healers where i don't like using the word healer because it then puts it in the context of you know medical and i'm trying yeah. to say that's that's one side of the but mm. we interact with these horses and, and we instinctively know and sense their fear and their anxiety the problem is is that we aren't given tools. How do we dress? How do we address what we're picking up in others? We're not taught that. We, we, no, well. no. And so, so that's why I really focus on um, the energetic and the intuitive side of like when I teach a riding lesson, it's quite unique. <laughs> and, you know, and, and I teach these courses for people to, to reach out and become more um, intuitively engaged with horses because I do have people that are sincerely interested in taking this forward <laughs> and they write me back and they like, you know what? We're only on week three and you've already changed my whole perspective of life and things, and things in my life have changed. And I'm like, yeah. okay, it's working. It's working. I oh, love that's, that. That's amazing. Um, I, I had a chat, um, uh, um, Justin Dunn, a gentleman I had a uh, did an interview with him he was my first interviewee bless him and yes. he he does therapy for the veterans with his horses oh and, yes um and he used to work for um kids kids with cancer he used to work at a summer camp where they take the kids riding and they, they get to spend like lots of time with the horses and interacting which he he loved but he said he found that because there's lots of people around and they've all got an opinion and they're all asking questions, mm -hmm. it interflowed with the actual flow from mm -hmm. the, the the child and the horse. And and he's so now when he does the veterans, he says, I, I don't want talking, I just want them to interact. Mm -hmm. So even if I even if something was happening and he said to somebody else, This is what's happening now, he said, That's an interruption. He says, So we don't do that at all. We just allow the total process of the veteran and the animal and and we don't interrupt because they're in that moment they're in that zone and nothing around them exists because they're totally in that moment and, yes. is, and that's the most precious thing to to see is is that change before your eyes and you can but you can feel the energy mm -hmm. um because you can feel that the change because sometimes you can't visually see or or people think they can't visually see but there's there's a subtle like the calm before the storm, it's almost like that stillness, and you know there's been a change. So even though physically you can't see it, there's been a change in some form. Um, but that's that's fascinating. I'm just seeing how long we've we've been on. So oh, we've only been on an hour, so that's okay. 
we're good. So he's, 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 he's ha having the same um, observations. So yes, I, I mean, I, he's, have he's... A barn. I have a barn. I'm in a, a short barn. I only, I only want six stalls. That's enough to clean out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I have a gate at each end of my barn uh, aisle. And when I work uh, train horses, I turn them loose in here. Hmm. And then I do a meditation and that horse has the right to come in and join me or stand back. But when I'm working with horses, I don't talk because hmm. I'm you, here you do, uh... and there's no emotion. It's complete presence grounded. The concept of me, <laughs> okay, is gone and it's the awesome expression of an idea and the idea is can i can i please meet you and that's when these horses will come up i i work with mustangs <laughs> i go to the the tip trainers <laughs> and they'll give me these horses that are running them out of the round pen and i'll just go and meditate and I find the, it's kind of odd. It's like, it, again, it's like music. What, what key, what frequency of energy do I need to touch through my heart to come in and be as a stillness so that I can reach and touch you? And there's no, there's no talking. And I, I have these Mustang trainers and they're going, how do you do that? <laughs> how did you just walk in and put a rope around that horse and, and be able to touch him? Like we've been working for three months and can't do that. Mm -hmm. So there, there's this natural, you have to be present. There's no ego. There's no emotion. And there is no intention. Yes. I, somebody told me that years and, ago. And, and so that that is where I start as a horse trainer, not as not as um, I own you and and we're going to get along. It's just I'm nothing. Please fill me up. So that he's doing, he's seeing it, and and it's it's like magic. And people don't understand it because we need somebody to give us a recipe book, you know, and and. Wow, <laughs> it just it lights me up inside just to talk about it because yes. it's it's like where we we are we should be that's what we are is this energy it's amazing. <laughs> so <laughs> could you, um, I'm just I'm just in awe because I um, I've seen my I mean your your work is in a lot more a lot bigger and a lot more depth to it um, but I I totally understand when you're explaining in my own version and um the stillness i mean so, sometimes i've been to when i've been to see horses um when i f first used to go visit horses there was a lot of chit chat and and people yes. wanted to know what you know some some what funny, some, are some you doing? Some <laughs> funny stories but a lot of the time it's it's not and i say that it's not communication is verbal it's just an, an energy exchange and it's just um and then I'll, I'll say and I'll I'll be explaining I'll go right I'm going to focus on the horse now and I'll say I'm sorry this is a bit boring because there's nothing to see and I think oh there's nothing for, for them to look at and they'll go no no it's fine we can see something's going on from the horse so they can they they know the horse so they can visually see the horse is relaxing and then yeah. the, the head and they and they go into their own zone and um and it is literally like the 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 quietest place when you when you get that and and the stillness and and it's just pure um just pure love it's it's such a beautiful place um and and a few times when I've been, we, we have like summer camps. So we, we have people that go to, to, to camps and they, they get to, to have a go at show jumping, dressage. And they build their confidence because they're doing it in a group and they get to camp out. Mm -hmm. So I, I was invited to do some taster sessions, which was 
I've never done that before. And I thought, I've, I've no idea how this works, but it, it worked. It worked fine. It worked out how it's meant to work out. And one at one time, I thought I, I went to I went in to see the client, and um, I I says, "Oh, why don't you have a go? Right, I'm going to do this, and then I want you to just to do what I've just done." Right. So she connected with the with the heart, hand on chest, and with us. And I says, "Right, just just be quiet and still, and just breathe, and just go, go with the flow." And it was, and I says, "Do you mind if I film this?" And I had my phone with me. She that's fine and I filmed it and it was just lovely to share because for me when when I can teach another person that my what I do is not a magical um thing it, it's something that we all possess you know just that little connection it's something we all possess and yes. when you see that with their own horse it's just, I mean I'm, my heart it's such a beautiful thing because I know what it feels like when I get that little connection with my own horse. Um, not when I'm doing my day-to-day -day stuff with her. I'm doing my day-to-day -day stuff. But when I'm doing nothing with her, we have that connection. It's it's beautiful. To, so to share that and to to let somebody else experience it and, and think, oh, my goodness, that's, you know, that's, that's beautiful. It's, yeah, it's worth its weight in gold for me. And I love doing that. I absolutely love doing that. Um, I and and wouldn't it be nice if we could have awareness of yes, that, more of that. Grace, or bringing the human to a place of what I call compassion, which is come past the I am, okay, and just be um, connected. The, I I just think I keep going back into history. I I've studied the history of the horse the culture of the horse and i studied the spiritual harmonic uh sorry spiritual shamanic uh, interactions where nature actually gave us the tools to survive and we shut we've been shut off we've been disconnected and we've lost this and everybody has it and i and, and you know it kind of tears me apart sometimes and um, because i like to go to horse shows i i like to participate and it's extremely hard seeing and sensing and knowing that those animals are trying to get people's attentions and that the horses are talking among themselves <laughs> i'm i'm not kidding you i can take i had a client who had a barrel racing horse out in oregon and we stood at the end of the bleachers with niner and niner had gone through the training process and he's watching all his friends come in and out of the ring and you watch them and their ears are twitching and he's yawning and looking and chewing and he really talked to one of his friends who has really 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 messed up he had a tie down and the rider had a big bit on it and the poor horse and as soon as niner saw that horse go and run his course and the horse came out, Niner, Niner was flipping his ears in expression. And I just looked at Adria and I said, do you see that your horse is telling that horse that he acknowledges what the what? That challenge was, Yeah, you know, and, and people miss it. And if we, I just, it, I just don't know how to, to affect, mm -hmm. um, waking people up but it it it's right now it's hard for me to go out and participate because i just oh yeah. <laughs> you know it's like when you know something you just say here <laughs> but nobody wants it <laughs> you just kind of go I th can I you have the right planet can i wake up tomorrow <laughs> on a different planet please <laughs> but there's a real rhyme and a reason for everything you know yeah. so i do what i do here and i love having the ability to help people train horses that nobody understands it's, it's awesome <laughs> you need to come to the uk <laughs> Okay, well, line me up. As long as I don't have to have my COVID vaccine, I'll be good because I am no. <laughs> that's a, that's another subject altogether. <laughs> so, um, 
so james can you see the comments when when i put a comment can you see no. that okay. <laughs> I, so, okay. I can't really see it because it's so small on oh it's screen. okay so james just said i totally get that being in the moment with them is where the um, energetic connection is made and blended i have sat in the middle of a barn where i live with five new forest ponies and within 30 minutes they oh. all lay down around me oh created in that moment is palapal palapal yes and healing um mm -hmm. yeah brilliant. that's I mean, magic isn't I mean, it you're, i mean i'm i mean all because you're my my work is i'm self-taught um as, well, we had a conversation, a little conversation yesterday, didn't we? So I, I'm self-taught. I don't have any papers after my name. Who cares? And when I first used to, when I, no, I don't care now. But when I first used to do this, uh, and most of my clients are word of mouth. So, but when I first used to, um, to do this, um, obviously you can, you can do courses and you can get credit, you know, you can get um, papers and things. Um and I, I thought actually I I work my way intuitively. I don't want to I don't want to learn another person's way at the moment because I would be working their way. And actually, I sh I need to be working the way that I've been shown for myself at the minute. So I didn't go down that route. And, right. Um, and then that's I thought, why we get along. <laughs> First of all, you know, is, that because, is that because I I don't want to sort yeah well, I have here's to, the I, deal. Here's the deal. If you standardize, if you standardize, if you just write one recipe, hmm. then you're only gonna have one product. One yes. yes. Now your blood type is different than my blood type. Your bone density is different than my bone density. So we're going to pick up on different frequencies of information. Yes. Oh, you frozen, Pat? <laughs> you frozen again? <laughs> okay, I'm just going to put a comment there. Okay, you know my way, but the universe is infinite energy, infinite, infinite con consciousness. Mm. So this is why I chose not to have a degree. I could have several degrees. I just chose not to have them. I chose not to have a technical name for what I do because I view myself and I view life as unlimited. And as soon as I'm given a label and a piece of paper, and unlimited. Yeah. And I don't think that's the way we're supposed to be operating. No. But then that's just my opinion, you know. Now, I've gone through uh, a whole life, okay. <laughs> and I can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with physicists. I, I actually have done that. <laughs> we're talking about zero-point collapsing ge ge geometry, electronic geometry to, to create a zero-point. Um, and yet I can go out and talk to a farmer about a, a damn cow that won't stand up. You know, I don't need a piece of paper to tell me that I know how to do something. And by it, maybe it's standardized and it, it guarantees safety for people. But my father, my father said this. He said, if you are <laughs> in a free and fair marketplace, the marketplace will determine whether you are true or not, because if you're not good at what you do, you won't have a business. That's very true. That's very so, true. So apprenticeship is is good, but memorizing and trying to copy somebody else without putting your own expression into it. Yes. Is suppression. Yeah. The I don't think I don't know how you suppress somebody's life force. I just think we're supposed to go. Oh. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. I'm just trying to see. So we've got. Um, is it? 
I don't, I am hoping that the people that you share this with are able to see it. I'm assuming that they must. Um, I'm hoping so, but if not, we'll get them on. There are a few people on because it tells me how many people are on, but um, the only people that can ask, that can ask questions are, are the, the ones that the real people that I know. So I think actually a friend of yours might have done. Okay. Yes. This, oh, so Wendy, Wendy Scarborough. Oh, Wendy, yes. Yes. So she's put- way over at the mouth of the Columbia River on the west coast of the oh, United States. Pat, Pat is the best, full of good knowledge. So that's what she's put. Um, oh. <laughs> I just finished, I helped her with her horse, Sassy, um, and, and we did a rebirthing, but I didn't get connected quite well enough. And, uh, but Wendy found the solution that she needed, which was really good. Yeah. You know? Yes. So. And then we've got somebody called Robin Lawson. Yes. Robin so is right in now. Ohio. I am here. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, so this is my, this is my second time interviewing with, with live stream. Are you, I have a group. So I run a couple of groups and mm-hmm. it's intu- it's intuitive based. And I, I, again, that's something I've just started doing, um, but it's for people because I was guided. This is what I should be doing. So you I just aliens drop in or like who else shows up? <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I use, I use live stream so we can have like, a, so people could come in and we can interact. So it's a little, little bit like zoom, but for doing interviews. So this is my second time. And it's just getting people to be able to ask questions. Um, but I know through Facebook they have to get permission okay. to show to show no, their no. Yeah. I, I use I do um group group get togethers on Zoom and I like I it people can just sign in and then we get going <laughs> and then I can open up all the different boxes and everybody starts talking and it's just like, oh, all it's awesome. It's awesome. I can, and because, I can and it is really hard uh, as an interviewer because, you know, you're sitting there and it's just like silence. I call it the wall of silence. You know, what do you do? Well, yeah, I know because I'm, I'm finding it fascinating. I'm listening, but I'm trying to look for questions and I'm wanting to share because I want I want you to get. So, that, so they are chatting. So this is good. This is good. So they are chatting, but but we people sometimes watch afterwards, so we can I can share this afterwards and people can watch it and they can still yes. comment. Yeah. Um, but I'm just thinking. What well, right? I think we should have another session. Uh, I think because you've got so much information, and I think we've just touched on it. Because um, it would be it would be nice to give people something that they could maybe take away and practice some little exercises, to, you know, the intuitive side or something that you can share. Do you think there's something that you could share tonight for them to yeah, have a go? At? I brought it up yesterday, and that is to do a meditation and invite your inner child. To come out and play. Okay, yeah. I know that one. <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I mean, I may be expressive as a as a a child, <laughs> as a mature woman. Oh my god, you know. But that that essence of who you are is still held in anywhere between 10 to 20% of your original cell structure. Yes. And the rest of it is like the invasion of the aliens, okay? The bacteria, the parasites, the fungus, God knows what else, okay? So inside of you is buried this essence of who you are originally or meant to be. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I want to learn more about. (laughs) Well, when you go in, when you go in and find that and start to use it to, to support it, then the gateways, doorways uh, open up and you just walk through. Mm, I think we should. I think we should arrange for another time and and uh, <laughs> talk about that more because there's because anything any work you do on yourself 
it, it's it's going to help with your animals as well. So even if we don't get to your level of what you know, in an ideal I, in an no, ideal don't world, don't compare yourself. Here, wait a minute. Okay, don't compare yourself to me. Okay, um, honor you and take you and find yourself. That's all you need to do. I I was recognized as an intuitive when I was born. Okay, I can tell you conversations <laughs> while I was in my mother's womb. I don't expect anybody to be like me. There are tools. There are tools that have been stripped away from our our consciousness. But if we re-engage those tools, the authentic essence of who you are emerges. It is a sin in my world to compare yourself to anybody else because you've already limited and defeated the yeah. core essence of your, your spirit. So mm. love yourself. I love yourself to the point where you go into the bathroom and you look in the mirror and you look like, oh, and you start laughing. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> that's, where, that's where it begins. I, with yeah. love. I know. Okay? So yeah. there's two sounds in the world. They say, oh, okay. Om, om. I can't sing. Okay. But they go, oh, and you start toning. Okay. That's supposed to be the creative sound of life. Okay. I can back horses up saying, Ooh. <laughs> but you know what? I can make people sparkle when I laugh. Yeah, that's all. So laugh is it to me yeah. is as important as, Ooh. I'm so, I'm energetically serious. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm laughing and I'm connected in here and I'm having a darn good time. Okay. <laughs> that's where that's where my energy work starts. I can see that, Pat. It's it's just coming out of the screen. It's it's just lovely. <laughs> so Robin <laughs> Robin Lawson has just said, Is um is this what I need to do with Ozzy just to be in the aisle with him and meditate and offer to introduce? Okay, so, Robin. Robin, first of Robin. all. I love you, Robin. <laughs> Don't think. Just go to the barn. Don't worry about having to fit into the rules. Other than your horse does not have the right to tell you what to do all the time. Okay. And start laughing. Just go to the barn. Don't worry about what your friends are thinking. Don't worry about feeding your horse treats. Just stand there and start laughing and see what he does. <laughs> Right, so we'll we'll see what his answer is. Um, there's Paula um, Boscher. I hope yes. I pronounced that right. Paula's from New, from New Zealand. New so you're Zealand. talking to New Zealand today. <laughs> I'm here from New Zealand. Hi, Pat. So she's saying hi, Pat. <laughs> um, so she's saying hi. That's great. We've got a couple of more people. Um, I'm just seeing what are the comments. Oh, yeah. So Martha says we are all different and have so much to give. Uh, Martha is, um, Martha had, um, um, she won't mind me saying, but she, yeah, she, she, she lost her son a year ago and that has opened her up to um, a whole new world. Just put uh, but she connects with him and it's, so yeah, He's she's here. She's she's skills and that can here. <laughs> She'll be very pleased to say that. Um, yeah, she's a, she's a very empath empathic lady. She's a yeah. Can you feel it? Can you feel the energy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, like I, when I say I'm a universal, <laughs> intuitive you universal, um, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'm running open almost all the time and and it's really hard for me to go out in like this is great it's very hard for me to come off my land because i have done a lot of energy frequency work to level and balance the energy running through the property that's not see that's another whole show um, 
And then when I go off property, it's just like I have to close down because when I get in around different people, I just get all this energy feedback off of their aura. But I can call, I can call things and yeah, never mind. Um, yes, I not a channel. I just people, ideas, people, energy comes to me. Mm -hmm. Um, things happen. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> see, I just have had. Okay, most people live their lives in the concept of the physical, and I don't limit myself to the physical reality unless I'm actually interacting directly with people. But here on the farm, most of my interactions, they may be in a physical realm, but the majority of them are energy-based, energy-based concepts of ideas, and moving energy, folding time so that I can resolve traumas either here or for somebody somewhere else. Um, I just, so when you speak about, um, yeah, a person somebody. that's graduate, I call it graduating. <laughs> okay. When I think graduates, I think gone um, home. <laughs> you call them forward like that. Cause that was from the, that was from her heart. Yeah. That just pulls, because this is, I'm working with an EMF field coming off a cell phone. Mm -hmm which is going through a cell tire or that's going to a satellite and bouncing back to you. Mm -hmm. So do you think it goes through a lot of people's energy streams? Like uh, I can call in all kinds of stuff. Um, that's why I went and studied with shamanic peoples because it's not always love and light okay there right. there is darkness and part of my awareness is is i see both sides and i have to work with both sides yeah and it's not a bad thing either no and that's another whole show <laughs> oh we've got quite a few <laughs> i i can see i can see a monthly <laughs> interview session coming on <laughs> like like i i work with horses <laughs> and I've introduced my my expression yeah. of understanding and Can I people, people have a hard time with it but it's okay to ask me to come out to a haunted house and talk to whoever's living there you know it's like okay <laughs> whatever <laughs> can I just give you a little message um because as you were talking earlier but I didn't want to interrupt I they, your horses um but not just your horses that are there now ones that are no longer there um they just sent me um a, a communal message and it was just um and the just the word that so they're almost like a semicircle behind you and you're in the middle of the circle and it was um we support her because she supports us but those words are, don't give the depth of that feeling I know the feeling. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's uh, so I'm just explaining to the people. people. That are watching. Yes. The depth of that, it was just no emotion, it, but pure. Yes. And yeah. support. But here we go again. As I'm, as I'm <laughs> saying that, so this is how I'm picking up. As I'm saying that, so it's a semicircle. So if I do, I'm going to draw a pic. You'll have to excuse my picture, my little, my little person. <laughs> So, that's <laughs> my pitch. Hang on. That's my pitch. That's you. Yes. And that's yes. the horses behind. But yes. as I, as I yes. say that, and this is really weird because it, it, it's like a kid's picture. So, that yes. is connection out to others. And then from that, it's almost like more. So, it's, it's a, it's the web. And can you remember we was talking yesterday and you said something and I said, yeah. and I said the, a bit like fascia, but the earth's energetic web is, is in, it's like that. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, I can see it now. It's, so in my, in my intuitive horsemanship course, um, in the first, the first level, I teach people to actually sit in the heart of the earth. 
Mm. and use that network to use broadcast yeah to, to amplify and um so yes what you're picking up on is very valid um all the horses come around they're they're standing here like it's just like all around me um i made a commitment to 21 horses make make me cry but to if let them interpret these horses or expose them to unnatural um environments mm -hmm. i turned them out into um uh, 52 acres and allowed them to run free never to have shoes no more drugs no more having to carry riders unless they wanted to I mm. straightened their bodies they were my university professors I learned more from those 21 horses yes. than you can find in any book on horses yeah. and I made a commitment to those horses to give them a life home and I'm down to the remaining last five or six horses out of the 21. The average horse, I, I just lost two horses within a week. Uh, they were partners. They were both thoroughbreds. Um, those horses, one was 32 and the other was 34. Oh, wow. And I've had them. I had them for most of their their adult life. You know, and, and those horses should have been dead at age uh, 12 and 15 hmm. you know so that's the kind of commitment we have here and it it's it's serious to me because it's not just a, a business it could be a business i'm supposed to run it as a business okay um and i'm down to it is what it is and I always have my bills paid. My horses are always fed. Something or somebody out there always shows up to fill mm -hmm. in the gaps. And yeah. so you learn to go and live, okay, and not worry. If you're doing what you should be doing and your passion, then, mm -hmm. um, It yeah. fills in. It fills in. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's hard for some people to understand but i have a great husband <laughs> you told me about him he goes away to where are we going um you know because he'll get out he'll come in he's gone for 28 days and he'll come in and I say yeah we're going to ohio for for four days next week are you good with that oh yeah i'll drive you know and and he's at the beginning, I think he thought I was a little uh, far-fetched. <laughs> then he started to see the horses change. And then he went, oh, wait a minute, she's doing the same thing to me. <laughs> and it's working. <laughs> so, so he's helped me financially keep things together. And he helps me work on some of the, I get stallions in here and some, okay. To be honest with you, some horses that have had it up here with people. And uh, he makes sure that I come out of the barn in one piece. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> you know, so, you know, mostly I'm here by myself, which I absolutely love because I'm intuitive mm -hmm. and I don't have all that energetic noise from other people. Uh, I think maybe that's why, like, a lot of the guru people were hermits. Because when you start opening up and you're open most of the time, it, it's yeah. hard It's hard to to socialize. So, so, yeah, I'm a hermit. But I love it. I love oh, my life. You live it. Okay. Yeah, and I can see that. I mean, anybody watching this will be able to see that. You have such an enthusiasm. I feel that we've only just scratched... And and the subjects that you've talked about, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and watch this and just make notes because from that there's there's questions that I wanted to ask, but I want you, I want you to feel comfortable and just carry on talking as well. Well, if uh, anybody has questions, um, you're welcome either to come through you, um, <laughs> or if you are interested, uh, we have a a, a very little group of very amazing people who are interested in developing their intuitive and energetic awareness around horses so that they can teach their children 
and to have an impact on the horse environment that they're working and living in. Mm-hmm. And and then some of these people might go on to actually be animal communicators or people that are able to move energy and help other people understand. So and that we do these little Zoom classes. And I, I have meditations that I've put together. Uh, and we send out meditation links to the students for the school. And I called what what we're teaching um, as intuitive horsemanship. Uh, it's in light hand. So in the light yes. hand, oh, which nice comes, comes off of the old word for enlightened, which was enlighten, which started with an O, but it was enlightenment. <laughs> The energy. That's it, that's See, a- I didn't even get into the part where I got kissed by lightning. Oh, so do you want to share that? I'm enlightened. Do you want to share that story about the lightning? And, and then we, we'll... Yeah, well, share, 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 <laughs> share the story. Okay, see that? See this? I don't know if you can see it. Right. Well, I got backwards. This streak here, that's a lightning streak, okay? Uh, So, let's see. I was walking. The thunderstorm had gone by. I had been in the barn, and I had my my duck boots on, my wellies. And I'm walking back to the house. And I went to reach for a little, you know, a little gate, garden gate to walk back from the barn to the house. And I went to reach for that. And I have no recollection of how I ended up with my boots standing at the gate. And I'm about 15 to 20 feet back towards the barn, smelling. So I had lightning indirectly either hit the fence line or hit the ground near me. And it literally blew me out of my boots. So that kind of changed my energy field. And, And then... In 2012, I'm standing on my front porch videotaping a really bad windstorm. And it was pouring rain. And I had like a aluminum storm door and it was kind of blocked. So it was open. And a lightning, a ball lightning, I actually have a, a video. It comes down, I slow mode the video. Because I wanted to see what lightning looked like. And it just looks like this ball. And it comes right at me. And it goes right past me. And it hits the grounding rod for the house. It's at the corner of our porch. You need to move that. And then it bounced back onto the aluminum storm door. But when the shock wave came, it moved the the rock that was holding the door closed and the door swung at me and I put my thumb on the door and I'm going to tell you what, it was the worst electric fence shock I have ever experienced. Oh, you know? I don't like electric shock. That one, that one bounced me out of my body and put me back in my body. And, and, I can tell you this little story. I went after that. Like, I didn't think anything of it. I it just like, okay, I got shocked. And I went back up to the barn to clean up the mess because the water had flooded into the aisles. And I went to push the broom. i like, I keep coming to consciousness sitting on the stool. I'm like, what am I doing on the stool? I have this intention of sweeping the barn floor. I go and do that two or three times. Every time I'm right back on that stool and I come to consciousness. So this last time I said, oh, I'm going to pay attention. And I started to sweep and I got two pushes of the broom. And it was like two. I don't know if it was my body and my higher self talking. Or or an angel or something. But I got told my body part told my conscious my intellectual part you're hurt and you need to sit down and do nothing and i heard it as clear as day so at that moment my my consciousness or my physical and higher self were split and trying to figure out how to talk 
the time when I got blown out of my boots, um, I became extremely energetic, which is why I think I was able to download and figure out half of the things I figured out about the energy system of rebirthing horses. Because what I do is not written in any book. Um, that was, I get lightning storms in my, in my head, I guess, <laughs> kind of like Nikola Tesla. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> I get these downloads. A lot of people get them. It's just like, it's like a internal light and you just get all this information. And it's not like one idea. It's like flashcards. Not yet. Not this, information. And, and, and it just comes out. And then it just it just got into i i have some bizarre stories i can tell you um but it uh i think that changed part of the harmonics of my energy my aura and that's why i don't want anybody to be like me because i don't expect anybody to go through a lightning i was no. kissed not directly not scarred okay but it hit the ground twice in front of me and bounced up so whether it's the static charge coming off the electrical field, I don't know, but it definitely blew me on my boots. I couldn't pick up, I couldn't do filing. I could pick up a, a piece of paper and like a bill, yuck, okay, a bill, and I normally would put it in a file. I couldn't pick the bill up and put it in a file. I couldn't file paperwork yeah i couldn't do i couldn't do math in my head until 2017 i st i caught myself starting to do math in my head mm. that's how open oh, that's but it. i could i could move energy i could manifest it was just wow yeah so i'm now coming back i'm actually getting smaller and fitting more into the physical realm so that I can talk to you guys. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, do you know what, Pat? I've had an amazing evening listening to you. I don't, I mean, we've not, we've had a few viewers, but I think we could have probably had more. It depends how it, how it works. But I'm going to share this video with you and then you can, you can post it to wherever. Okay. Um, but we'll have to arrange, uh, let's see, I think. Oh, James just says, I completely understand what you are saying. I've had two near-death experiences, one as a child and one as a young adult, and I found myself seeing and knowing things about cellular healing but have not read or researched it or understood how I knew. Uh, what you say makes sense to her. So that's from Jane. And uh, Martha's had a total out-of-body experience. Yeah, um, it changes it changes your thinking quite a bit um and, and maybe i don't know like i keep saying i don't live with stress and i don't live with fear i just don't that's a beautiful place to be i'm still so, working with that i'm still working with that <laughs> so 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 the gift is to understand it's okay and 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 just find the giggly part of you and come out because the rest of us just want to play i just want to go play can we play horses i'd love to play horses i yeah that's another i'd love to play horses um jane's just all right get just another comment uh Pat, you are such an inspiration and i've so enjoyed listening to you thank you very much so that's from jane my Thank you, Jane. My pleasure. My joy. <laughs> so p people will be able to watch this afterwards, and I'm sure there'll be more comments. But I think so. Do, would you like to do this again sometime, Pat? Would you like to do another one? You've frozen. Oh, sure. <laughs> so I, just... I enjoy sharing. Because mm. I'd like uh, to on my back. Yeah, yeah, you're back. Yeah, I'd I'd like to know more. I'd like to know more okay. about your, sh your shamanic, um, uh, how you got into the sh sh shamanic side and what you've learned from that. Um, oh, 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 oh. The bits that you're, <laughs> you're allowed to say. 
Oh, Anna said this. <laughs> Anna Hickman says this has been brilliant and very interesting. Oh, I'm pleased, Anna, that you got to see this. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely. So I'm going to write a list because I think tonight was just about to get to to know a little bit about you. Yeah, I, 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 I'm just, I'm just going to tell you the way I perceive things. Don't assume it's right. Okay, no, but it's how I perceive things. How you perceive, yeah. And I'm always available to answer questions. Mm -hmm. And I sincerely, sincerely am here to help people discover the energetic potential of being unlimited. That's mm -hmm. what it's, you know, we can talk about horses. Yeah. They're already potentially unlimited. We just oh, love it. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, so I'd be love to come and chat again when it's a good time. And people can ask questions and send them to you, or they can send them to me at the Balanced Horse Project. Mm -hmm. I have a page on Facebook, or I, Pat Cleveland is on Facebook. Uh, and uh, maybe we can get together and answer questions. That would be, be fun. That would My, be fun. That would be brilliant. We, um, yeah. Maybe do it on a it's yeah maybe a weekend when um maybe on a weekend it's trying to it'd be nice to do it in the daytime but i don't know what time it'll work out with you well we just have to see what directions we want to take and develop the next uh conversation maybe yeah. we could take a series of questions on one topic and put them together and and talk about that topic and then take another group of questions that takes us on another journey and Absolutely. just build it from there how's that i'm so excited i'm so excited <laughs> oh thank you so so much pat for giving up your time tonight oh yeah this afternoon where you are tonight here um, i hope everybody's um enjoyed tonight's session tonight's interview i have i it's it's because I'm wanting to pay attention and really listen, and I, I did listen, but I'm also wanting to make sure that I can see what's going on there. I would have liked to have shared it more, but then I felt like I was being rude and not paying attention to you. Um, okay, so this is the deal. This is the deal. I let me talk. You help people <laughs> by scanning what's down, and it, and if you need to, just ask and. Um, teamwork helps expand the world, you know. That's the way it goes. Oops, where have you gone? There we go. Absolutely, well, you just push yeah. up, right? Just get rid of Pat. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> jo Josie Whitman said it's been great, thank you for sharing. And Maria Crane, so enjoyed this. What a lovely soul, Pat is amazing. So, um, and Martha. Another amazing soul. Thank you, Pat. So the feedback. Um, Great. I felt like, you know, when you want to get so much information out and you you, you, you go blur, <laughs> you, you go blur and and um, so and, and absorb it. So I'm, I'm hoping that came across OK for everybody else, because um, I certainly enjoyed it. It, it was fun. So Good. we're going to do it again when it's everybody fun. says, okay. Yes. And um, it was absolutely a delight. And I'm so happy that people in your neighborhood are interested. And I'm so glad yes. Josie from outside of Atlanta, Georgia tuned in and everybody else that I was able to find the link and make it work from the <laughs> Bells Horse Project. Thanks for the support and and keep tuning in and seeing what Ronnie can do with other interviews because I think she's going the right direction. It's oh, good. We need, we need interactions like this. It's really Maybe do it through because uh, um, I'll have to show share the link from the um, YouTube because that's an open, a more of an open platform as well. So yes, people yeah. that are on Facebook can can um can maybe view from there so thank you very very much have a lovely day pat i hope you're not too tired after chatting away oh um, no I'm, I'm i gotta, go, I gotta go feed horses and and get them settled actually i have a horse leaving at five o'clock so i gotta go bring him in he's been out running around he's a bit sweaty so I clean up owner, you know <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh well go go and have fun go have fun with that inner child and 
<laughs> All right. And, uh, I'll be in touch with you privately and just to say thank you properly. But thank you so, so much. All it's right. It's a joy and a pleasure. Everyone go on and have a great and wonderful day or evening. And we'll talk thank soon. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> Bye. Oh, wow. She's such an amazing lady. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I hope everybody enjoyed that. Um, there was no structure it was just it was just um just go with the flow and and she's certainly got bags and bags of energy bags of it and so much information so much knowledge that we just scratched on the surface and um yeah that's um yeah that was amazing that was really amazing i'm still digesting uh, quite a few things but um, okay, I'm going to go now because I feel like I'm waffling. Thank you for attending. Thank you for watching. Thank you for whoever added comments. And uh, oh, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for joining. Um, oh, bless you. You're welcome, Anna. Thank you. And um, yeah, I could have I could have talked for ages, but I, it would be nice to have a. Um, some more of, of perhaps um, colleagues and friends, but we've had a few. We've had a few, which is good. We're good. Okay, right. I'm definitely going. To, I'm going to go have a glass, no, a glass of water and a cup of tea. <laughs> Something to eat after all that. That was so good. So good. Okay. Have a lovely evening wherever you are in the world. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for listening and just sharing, um, sharing a few few moments uh with myself and pat and i definitely look forward to our next uh, get together and see what we're going to talk about then <laughs> my cheeks hurt from smiling so much bless her take care and thank you very much bye for now <laughs>